Hey everybody, Charlie Nerner 2 here, and welcome back to Star Citizen. Today we're going to look at the 600i. We're going to go over what makes this ship unique, and why this ship may be better than you think. Stick around. Let's talk about the stock equipment and equipment sizes on the Origin 600i. The Origin 600i comes with three fixed size 5 weapon mounts, two dual size 3 remote turrets, four size 5 missile mounts loaded with anything between size 3 all the way up to size 5 missiles, a large size 3 shield, large size 3 power plant, a large size 3 cooler, and a medium size 2 quantum drive. It also has size 2 radars and size 1 thrusters. The Origin 600i's role is luxury exploration, unless you get the Turing variant. It is a size 5 ship with 2900 hull HP, and its dimensions are 52 width by 91.5 length and 17 height. Now that's in meters. It has 1.6 million kilograms of mass. Top speed is 109 meters per second. Afterburn speed is 955 meters per second. Its pitch is 30 degrees per second, yaw 30 degrees per second, and roll 50 degrees per second. It has a hydrogen capacity of 2.3 million liters, a quantum fuel capacity of 3,000 liters, and a cargo grid of 40 SEUs in addition to a vehicle rover bay. The 600i exploration variant can be purchased for $475 in real world money or for 9.475 million alpha UEC at Astro Armada in Area 18. Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on beautiful Hurston, and we are going to take an exterior walk around of the Origin 600i. Let's go ahead and get started. So coming up to the ship, you'll notice it looks strikingly different than most of the ships in Star Citizen. This being a single monobody design where you don't have you know, various wings and nacelles and, and other doodads hanging off the ship. It's, for the most part, it's one particular piece, one solid looking piece, which I enjoy. I think it makes it stand out from the other uh, vehicles and ships in Star Citizen. Also, if you'll check out the canopy here, it's just gorgeous, absolutely no struts, one of the best views in the game, and we'll check that out when we get up to the bridge. Uh, you'll also see how tall that the Origin 600i uh, sets off of the ground. Even with this rocky terrain here, it's quite easy to get uh, into a good location because you have such length on the uh, landing gear here. Now, it does make the ship look a little ungainly, being so tall off the ground, and you can see here it's leaning a little bit. But that allows this central elevator here, the one that's 20 meters away, right, right here with the caution, that allows you to load cargo and uh, various vehicles onto that elevator. And then you also have your main elevator for entry here. Let's walk around first, take a look at the rest of the ship. Uh, you'll notice there's kind of a shield. Kind of wraps around the uh, missile and engines here, the missile pods and the engines. And it goes just behind that weapon up there up top. And it comes all the way up here to the front and kind of makes like a chin. Uh, this design language was... Uh, inspired by, I would say, the BMW i-series of vehicles along with these light blue accent lights going around here and uh, underneath up on the front. Now I really like this design. I think it once again sets it apart. Another thing is uh, ship naming is in for this one. As you can see here, mine is the Charlie Niner 2 Rikard. All of my ships will have the Charlie Niner 2 moniker with a uh, name at the end there. So if we continue on to the back, once again you see the cargo elevator, 
You see some maneuvering thrusters, what appears to be a serial number. I don't know if that's unique. Tell me in the comments if that is unique to each ship. I think that would be very interesting if it was. And then coming underneath here, I believe these are the escape pods, but I'm not 100%. We'll see where this is on the internals of the ship here in just a minute. Uh, and then we walk between the two large rear landing legs. Now, I don't like these wires hanging down. I feel like that's just asking for something to get caught and are torn. I know it's just a design piece and uh, someone thought that looked nice, but I wish that could be tucked up or maybe, you know, cable managed a bit better. Uh, as we move to the back, we're underneath this shroud here. We can kind of see where, where it curls up around either one of the engines. One on this side, one on that side. And then just some greebling here in the middle. And then this side is the same as the other side. We'll walk up it to get back to our uh, elevator. Planetary tech is coming along very nicely, as is performance. I've been getting pretty good performance. I'm still playing patch 3.13.1. I'm not playing the PTU yet. I normally don't play the PTU patches. They're usually a too, little too buggy for me. I wait for the live patches. And sometimes even one or two patches after the live patch before I play the new uh, content. So I'm really looking forward to Orison. And uh, once that comes out, I'll be able to purchase, at least I've heard I'll be able to purchase the Nova Tank. And I'll give you a old tanker reviews or old tankers take on the Nova Tank. And I know people are looking forward to that. Um, this episode is going to be a little different. I've taken a lot of... Uh, Constructive criticism for great YouTube influencers and content creators for Star Citizen. I'm really excited about that. So this will be my first chance, our first shot at editing. So please don't be too harsh. I promise I will get better. So this is the personnel entrance. What we're going to do is we're going to go straight to the top deck and we'll work our way down. And there's a reason we're going to do that. So what I love about this elevator is that you come up to the top deck here. First of all, you're greeted by much better fit and finish than the other vehicles I've uh, covered so far, or other ships I've covered so far, rather. You've got what appears to be some type of wood down here, along with just everything has a high-end finish and a cover to it. There doesn't appear to be, you know, tons of exposed duct work and wiring and stuff like that. All right, so the first thing we see here is three escape pods. And then if we turn left here from the entrance, this wonderful bridge. And what appears to be some type of stonework here, or at least faux stone, for the origin symbol. And I love that. I think that's a good touch. A um, lot of space in this ship. And for better or for worse, uh, I think it's a good thing. I think it can be managed a little better. And CIG has uh, spoke on that. This will get a rework on the internals after the 890 jump has came out. They actually talked about that. And it's supposed to be gold standard, I believe, at the end of this year if it hasn't changed on the roadmap yet. However, I still think it's good even the way it is, though there could there is room for improvement. And I'll point out where I think there's room for improvement. Personally, I think this bridge is perfect. You have two co-pilot seats. They have access to a remote turret on the top rear and bottom of the ship. And then you've got the captain slash pilot's chair here. So I'm going to go ahead and set in it so we can see the view. If I can get in here. I think I just turned something on. Come on. Not exit. We want to enter. There we go. So when you set in this chair, it rises up. And I think that's just great because you get this awesome view here. Now, I do have the uh, power on the ship so we can see around here, but I just wanted to show you uh, the view that you get, which is just, frankly, for this size of ship, amazing for the pilot. And even the co-pilots have a great view, as you can see there. So we'll go ahead and hop up, and we're going to check out the rest of the ship. I'm not going to set in the uh, co-pilot seats. Suffi suffice to say they have access to the turrets as well as multifunction displays as and uh, HUD displays on their displays on their, well, on their HUD, on their helmets. So as we come back here from the bridge, 
you'll see that globe kind of pop up. That's a bit of a bug now, but this is, well, this is Explorer version of the 600i. And the Explorer version comes with this middle section. And this middle section can be swapped out for the Turing version, which has uh, various uh, living quarters to uh, basically like rooms, hotel rooms to transport people in so they have somewhere to stay. Kind of like a mini cruise ship, maybe a small yacht. I think this is probably more of a small yacht than anything. But this is the exploration variant. And this middle section here is modular and can be changed out. And with the exploration variant, you get that cargo elevator as well as extra cargo. And we'll go down there and look in a minute. And this science slash scanning slash map area here. Now you have a hollow globe here, just kind of floating above the glass. Pretty sure that will probably eventually get moved with the rework, maybe behind the bridge there, or maybe just look a little more deliberate that it's a hollow globe and it won't just be floating above the glass there. Uh, as we come around the side here, origin branding everywhere. Nice flowy lines, recessed lighting, accent lighting everywhere. And then you have what is supposed to be the scanning stations. Uh, now they're set up in a weird facing away from each other setup. This will most likely change and become more functional, but what really matters is that there are two dedicated scanning seats. And the reason I bring that up is because this ship was originally supposed to compete with the Kani Aquila. Kani Aquila has one scanning seat and it basically gives up a turret for that purpose. Here you have two scanning seats as well as you maintain the two turrets. So one of the things that I think makes this ship unique, and we'll, we'll go into a summary at the end of why I think it's unique and, and who this ship may be for. You also have some nice flowy designs on the ceiling, you know, just artwork designed for design's sake that you wouldn't get on more function-oriented ships. So as we continue to the back here, you'll notice there's an elevator, and we will go to that elevator in just a second. And you'll come up here and you have another thing that I think is very important for this version of the ship, especially the exploration variant. You get an armory, right? So you can store suits of armor one here. It says suits armor, looks like uh, weapon stations, but once again, this is getting a slight rework. And I think it's gonna give us armor storage here since it says it on the walls. And then we have weapons and armory. So we've got, I imagine the suits of armor will go here. And by armor, it's probably going to be uh, EVA suits, things of that nature, uh, hot and cold weather suits. And then you got your armory. Uh, you also have an aid medical supply aid station here and a fire extinguisher. All right, moving back. This area, well, this area is habitation slash relaxation area but what's amazing is the views this being an exploration ship and the touring ship variant as well views are paramount look at this there are so many ships in star citizen that only have views out of the cockpit and some don't even have views out of the cockpit i'm looking at you star lifter starfarer and the, well, the Freelancer series as well. So you have this bar, and, um, you know, a lot of people think it's faced the wrong way. I, I would agree with that. I think the patrons should be looking this way, and the bar should probably be uh, moved back. But regardless, it's nice to have. This is something that you don't have in the Kani Aquila or even the upcoming Corsair. And uh, when the ship came out, it was priced higher than the Anvil Carrick. Now, the Anvil Carrick has since skyrocketed in price to, I believe, over $600 now, or right at $600 for real world, real world, real world money. But at the time, it was $350, and this came out, I believe, at about $400 price point. Uh, 435 for the exploration variant and now it's up to 475 but that's the final price whereas the Carrick is up to 600 so this is meant to to compete more with the Kani Aquila and it is meant to compete with the Corsair I would assume but the Corsair is only exploration ship by name I think so now you have a lounge area back here with an insanely large seat that is insanely far from the table in front of it 
I feel like this could use some re reworking, but it's still nice to have. Uh, the other thing is when this ship was first introduced in the concept phase, it was supposed to be much smaller, more in line with Constellation series of ships. When they made the ship, it ended up being, I believe it's close to 90 meters, and I, I, I'm sure I told you in the uh, stats section the exact size when I had it in front of my face, but this is just working from memory here. I think it's close to 90 meters in length now, which is quite large. So that has caused a, a uh, disparity in the seats versus tables because they had to size up everything and now you have an abundance of space, almost too much space. Uh, so this is the galley area slash entertainment area. You can see the pool table in the back. And then we have the galley here. I think the galley is really well done. I, I really wouldn't change anything with the galley itself. Awesome table, marble with gold flecks in it. Gold flake, good gold fleck. I don't know, one of the two. And then this appears to be some sort of refrigerator. Water dispenser. Very nicely done. I love this. Very well stocked, very high end, and it's separated from the rest. Now, the odd part is you have these two engineering sections on either side with storage, which is strange. I imagine you would probably store uh, materials that you would use to work on these engineering uh, components back here, but it's still odd to, to think about the route that we had to take to get back here to bring boxes to store on these vertical grav mounts. So you can see here cargo plates one through four. All right, and then as we continue back, these are where the components are housed. All right, let's we'll see if it'll let us open them. It used to think it has changed. So these are where your modules are stored. This rear one used to open. We'll see if it does anymore. There we go. Utility panel, and you can see there's a component supposed to go there. It's not listed. All right, you also have one on this side as well. Components are not actually physicalized in this ship. And the reason for this is because it came out originally with medium components, and then they were upsized when the ship was upsized to large, but these component housings were not upsized to match. So I do like that there are separate engineering sections with their own vibe. They have their own lighting. They look a little more utilitarian. They mirror each other on either side, and I like that they're separate from what would normally be the guest area and the touring variant and the crew area in the exploration variant, which this one is. What I don't like is that it's difficult to get to. As you see, there's no other access down here. This little area is kind of separated, and you can only get to it from the upper level up here, which is why we went to the upper level first. So there needs to be some form of entryway to combine the bottom deck up here in the forward section of the ship with the bottom deck in the, I believe that's the aft section of the ship. So let's go down to the bottom deck on this side. And there's a couple things down here. There's crew living quarters, and then there's the cargo bay. All right, so let's go to the lower deck. The other thing I think is odd is that this elevator only takes you from upper deck to lower deck. I think there could be a staircase here or maybe some other form because it feels like a waste of an elevator just for that. Uh, in the touring variant, there's actually a spiral st staircase in this room that'll lead you from top to bottom and it in improves flow quite a bit, but it's not a, uh, a, a decisive answer for the lack of being able to go from this section to the rear section. So let's look at the cargo bay first. You'll see there's more of the weird storage where you have the vertical storage on the wall with the grav mounts. And then there's storage here on this elevator. With the exploration variant, this one here, you will get a G12 rover that is supposed to fit right in this section. As we continue forward, you'll see this awesome stone wall. I love this. I think this is a nice touch when you first enter the ship you see this stone wall and you kind of know, okay, this is something special. And then we go into the captain's suite, which has a few things it does right and a few things it does wrong. What it does right is the view. What I think it does wrong is has this 
desk kind of facing away from the entryway. I think you should be facing those that are entering your quarters. And then the other thing is, I wish I could dim this glass from the outside or make it one way because it seems a little exposed to be sleeping here with my feet towards the stars. Now that gives you a great view and all, but I don't know. It just seems an odd setup. I think I would set this up a little differently. Um, you've got a little setting area here. Looks like some cigars, a little bit of smoke residue. You've got some greenery, which to be honest, looks like it could be watered even though it's dripping. And then you have your, uh, well, it's, it's a suite. So you have your restroom here with this looks like, looks to be suit storage, maybe some clothes. You've got your, uh, mirror that only works for people who aren't vampires apparently and then you have your bathroom here this is all fine and dandy i just think the layout could be a little different and there needs to be some way to get some privacy great views though which once again very few ships offer views outside other than the cockpit so i'm really thankful for all the views that this ship gives us all right so let's head back through the cargo bay let's look at the crew quarters Right. Once again, another stone. So the crew quarters is another misstep, I think. It seems an oddly shaped room. It's very wide. There's plenty of space, but all the crew members just kind of get a nook on the wall. I think there's plenty of room here to close that off and give each person their own private, at least bunk, if not suite. Um, this could probably be done separately because the restrooms are on the other side here. I think we could probably give each person their own suite, each crew member, if we divide this space up a little differently. And then we go back here, there's personal storage. I don't know if it opens. See, there's personal storage here and here. Here are the escape pods that we saw on the bottom of the ship. And there's a chair here. I don't know why it's so smoky. That's another thing I think they need to come through and fix. It looks like a sauna back here. Another storage and another storage. So there's four storage lockers for four bunks, four escape pods. Then we've got, there's number four. Uh, clothes storage, it looks like, for civilian clothes. And then you have two bathrooms. Uh, for some reason, they're both male. I'm assuming they're unisex. And then another aid station. Let's go in one of the bathrooms without dying here. And you have rather spartan bathroom compared to the rest of the ship. You've got a nice large shower, which is nice, small toilet, and a sink with a mirror that also doesn't work. And the other bathroom is the same. So let's talk about the ship for a little bit. So what makes this ship unique? Well, what makes this ship unique for me as of the current patch, it is the only ship that is soloable that also has a large shield, right? And I, I wanna stress current patch because there are uh, rustlings in the breeze that the Constellation series may get a shield buff to a large shield. But as of the current patch, this is the smallest ship that is soloable, viable for one pilot to fly around because you have those three massive size fives and a large shield. Now what that does for you is it makes you pretty safe you can go do some bounty hunting you can go up to even very high risk if you're if you're very careful in what you do but even if you go to high risk bounties you can literally just kind of set in one place let your shield eat all of the the uh, return fire and just kind of slowly rotate and pick off the bounties with your three massive size 5 m7a lasers that you have on this you don't even have to change any components out to do this either. You can do this in stock configuration. Um, the other thing I like about it is you have a large power plant, large coolers, mostly large components, but your quantum drive is medium, and that is amazing for running costs because you still have decent range, but you don't use nearly as much fuel, and you can, you can basically save on quantum fuel costs because you're not using the large drives. So you can get a, I believe it's an XR1 or XL1, I'll have to look it up with the, um, I'll put it on the screen here if I can, 
the uh, fastest quantum drive, you can throw it in the ship and you can easily bounce from bounty to bounty. Now, why do I keep bringing up bounties? Well, that's the way I make money quite easily in the verse with this ship uh, so that I can purchase other ships in order to do reviews and try them out. Uh, the other reason for that is because world exploration really isn't in the game yet. Flying around and sightseeing, 100%. And that's another thing that makes this ship unique is the views you have everywhere. So you can fly around, get awesome views, look out of the uh, canopy, look out of the owner's suite, look out of the, uh, the recreation area in the back and get some pretty amazing views. Um, so you can make money with it currently. Another thing that makes it unique, one, it has better firing range than the constellations with the three size fives. Two, it has the large components that the constellation Aquila doesn't have and that the uh, Corsair is not supposed to have. Now the constellation may get a buff, but I don't think it's gonna get a buff to all the components, just the shield is what they're thinking about now. And it has the views that the other ships don't have. The other cool thing it has in the exploration variant here is you can store a rover and 40 SGU of cargo. With the Constellation Aquila, or Aquila, however you pronounce it, you can only store cargo and, or a rover, excuse me, you can't store both. Whereas this ship, you don't have to compromise. Yes, you can only store 40 SGU, which isn't a ton, but I would imagine on long expeditions, you will need supplies. So yes, you wouldn't use this to really make money running cargo, but you would need those supplies in order to stay out and survive on your own much longer. And just look at this view. So you've got the supplies, you've got the defenses, you've got the range to get out to these views, and then you also have the glass. And I know this is in the verse of Star Citizen, this is transparent metal, but for all intents and purposes, glass the views to be able to see everything that you're going to explore, to see these planets, to see these wormholes, to see enemy ships, whatever you need to see. And I know a lot of people will say, well, that's not as important. I think it is for me personally. This game is gorgeous and I like to see it. So hopefully they fix the layout issues inside. It is pretty maneuverable for its size. You definitely feel like you are flying a large ship but you can definitely get your weapons on target and with uncoupled mode in zero G, I almost think it's OP is you can just boost one direction, uncouple, turn your weapons behind you and engage anybody who's trying to fire it to uh, pursue you basically and fire upon you. Overall, I don't think this is a bad ship. It is overpriced. Yes, both in the verse and in the game. But the ship itself, when separated from its price, is a very good, very capable, probably the best solo exploration ship you can get. I'm not going to speak on the Touring variant. I don't have the Touring variant, and we don't know how Touring gameplay is going to work. But for exploration, I really think currently the only thing better is a Carrick. And Carrick requires, requires a crew to use. The 600i will benefit from a crew and be much more useful, but is definitely 100% soloable even in its present state. So those are my thoughts on the Origin 600i exploration. Tell me what you guys think. If, uh, if this is a ship that you own, if it's one that you want to pick up, will you earn it in-game? Have you purchased it with real-world money? Um, and uh, let me know in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed my, my video. I tried my best to do some editing and, and kind of get a better structure to this video. So please let me know how I can improve and if you like this format and what I can do better. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Please consider a like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.